So what we brought for you today are some examples of ways to use the power of the Ignition platform as part of digital transformation initiatives. We feel that these examples can be used in many different ways to help with the integration of plant floor assets to business systems. So I'll hand it over to Joe DeLivo, who's gonna walk you through those examples. Joe? Awesome, thanks James. The first example I wanna talk through is providing context for disparate data sources. Now, digital transformation initiatives, of course, require access to manufacturing data, um, which comes with a handful of challenges. The first challenge being getting access to that data. Data often exists in what we tend to call data silos, which are you know, various systems that are disconnected from each other. And then even once you have physical access to this data, you wanna make sure you are providing appropriate context to make the data meaningful and actionable. There are many self-proclaimed IoT platforms that will allow you to simply ingest data from a limited set of sources, but oftentimes this data is missing context, such as financial data from business systems to understand the real cost of downtime, maybe historical data from previous runs to compare against your current performance, even other contemporary factors like environmental conditions in the room that can prove really useful for analytics and machine learning tools that are trying to derive correlations and insights. And finally, you know, even once you acquire access to data and you contextualize it with other relevant data, you have to make sure that the data is accurate. So it has correct timestamps, correct units, and that it doesn't have any gaps which could impact your analysis and decision-making. Data scientists will tell you that data cleansing is one of the most time-consuming parts of building machine learning and analytic solutions, and it is a lot easier to clean data at the source than it is after the fact. So with that background information, I wanted to showcase a specific example of how we can use Ignition to provide context for these disparate data sources. Consider this simplified architecture where we have a single Ignition Edge gateway connected to two PLCs controlling two different production lines. One PLC might be something like a Slick 500 with some non-obvious tag names like you see on the left. And the other might be something more modern like a Logix or Siemens S7. Looking at the code, I might be able to figure out that both of these PLCs are controlling equipment with motors. But what would be nice would be to be able to model a generic motor, let's say, and to be able to organize and structure these tags in a way that is consistent with how I think about my manufacturing processes, possibly using a standard like ISA 95. So Ignition as a tool lets me create user-defined types, or UDTs, um, that can model any repeatable asset, like a motor in this case, and using the tag browser, I can build a cohesive model with proper tag names that better reflects my manufacturing process. James, can you click to the next slide, please? Thanks. And, and so using you know, a standard structure like this is particularly important when you talk about enterprise deployments, where you might want to have data that gets rolled up and compared across multiple sites. Having the data structured the same across those multiple sites is going to make it easier for us to be able to do those kind of comparisons and look at data in aggregate at the enterprise level. This leads actually right into our next example of providing real-time access to data across the enterprise. So here, we're gonna build on our previous architecture that we just looked at and introduce a new enterprise-level Ignition server and a corporate SAP system there at the top. ERP systems like SAP contain lots of relevant business data that can be useful for the manufacturing floor. Synchronizing this data across systems enables faster decision-making and eliminates human error and time wasted from performing things like manual data entry. So for this example, we want to showcase how we can create a production order, let's say an SAP, and using a combination of modules and some built-in ignition features, we can distribute that production order down from a corporate ignition server all the way down to the plant floor. On the right side here, you can see a production order we created in SAP. What we'd like to be able to do is to automatically download this and other production orders to the plant floor so that the manufacturing team knows what product to make and the target quantity to make. Uh, to do this, we're going to use the Cepasoft Business Connector and the Interface for SAP ERP modules. You know, if you look on the left here, we've created a simple piece of logic that calls a native SAP function to get a list of production orders that meet certain criteria that we care about. Maybe we're filtering by plant or we're filtering by a range of order numbers. And then on the right, we've defined a simple structure called a parameter, which contains just the information we care about. As you might imagine, SAP systems have lots of information, some of which may or may not be useful to the manufacturing process that we're doing um, on the production floor. And then using the business connector, we can create a simple mapping that stores the relevant fields from the SAP function uh, and map them into our parameter. If you look at the mapping here, we have the order ID, we have the SKU, which is basically the product or the material that we want to create, and then we have the quantity. And you can see here, we have a very simple one-to-one -one mapping of these fields, and there's a lot of other information that may or may not be important to us. 
And the rest of this is just gonna be standard ignition features. So here we defined a tag up there at the top, which is basically a trigger event for communicating with SAP. And we have an example here that when this tag is set to true, we're gonna run that business connector chart. We're gonna pass the data as something called a gateway message, which basically will package it up and send it over Ignition's gateway network down from the corporate instance to the site level Ignition instance. And then at that site level gateway, we define something called a message handler, which is going to receive that data, it's gonna write it to a tag, and then we can use the data in that tag anywhere inside our application. Note that there are a number of other ways to synchronize data across Ignition gateways, such as remote tag providers, uh, MQTT brokers, and what we've shown here is just a single example. We'll provide our contact information at the end of this presentation if you're interested in receiving actual project files for this example that you can use for your own systems. For the next example, you know, when we look at uh, talking about real-time data access, we have to recognize the role of mobile devices in accessing that data. And especially over the last couple of years, you know, companies have had to deal more and more with distributed workforces, uh, especially with employees working from home. And so having remote visibility into that data is especially critical. Even for employees on the manufacturing floor, enabling them to receive and acknowledge alarm notifications, for example, can save precious cycles of running around to HMI terminals and can ultimately reduce your machine downtime. And then aside from the manufacturing process itself, many companies are going paperless and may provide tablets for employees to, for example, take quality samples and be able to complete forms on the go. So really, whether you're working from home and need access to data or while you're on the move, having mobile device access is a critical part of companies, especially as a part of these digital transformation strategies that are getting built out. And so for Ignition, by being built on you know, standard responsive web technologies, you already get best-in-class mobile device support, and that's for devices of all form factors, including mobile phones, tablets, even smaller screen panels. In this example, we have two different views for acknowledging alarms, and these views depend on whether or not we're on a mobile device, like on the left, or on a desktop device, where we may expose some additional features uh, in a way that takes advantage of the, the larger screen size. From a security standpoint, Ignition is quite robust in that it allows us to allow or disallow certain actions depending on which system we're connected to. So if you consider the architecture we discussed before, you can see there's a new mobile device icon there on the left. And depending on our policies and our manufacturing processes, we can connect to an Ignition gateway either locally in the plant or potentially at the corporate level. And let's say for devices connected to the corporate Ignition instance, we may want to provide visibility to what's happening at the plant floor but we probably don't want to allow device control for safety reasons like on the left. One way to support this in a distributed architecture is to use Ignition's robust security model to specify read-only access levels for services like tag providers over the gateway network. If you look on the right, when you have this setting configured, clients connected to the corporate Ignition instance can read from, but not write to tags at the plant level. And this is a great way of enforcing that kind of security restriction the, at the gateway level. Of course, some companies may not want to provide all business level employees with direct access to manufacturing applications at all and may instead want to provide actionable insights in a more digestible format inside of a dedicated analytics tool like Microsoft Tableau or Microsoft Power BI. If you look at the next screen, I have an architecture showcasing uh, one of the ways in which you can kind of achieve this kind of data synchronization. And certainly there are a number of ways to get data into these tools, such as with REST APIs, uh, but I'm going to show you an actual example we're using that allows us to visualize sales information inside of Power BI. Here we're building on that existing architecture we've already shown and have added a few new components uh, that we'll talk through coming slides. So we start by defining uh, RESTful web service endpoints using the Cepasoft web services module to query order information from our CRM system. Uh, looking at the screenshots, you may notice that these are actually still from Ignition 7.9, but the same principles apply in 8 and 8.1. After querying data from the CRM system, we use Ignition's named query feature to store order information that we've obtained from that RESTful endpoint and to store it in a relational database. We then use a free Microsoft tool called the On-Premises Data Gateway to synchronize data from the database with Power BI and to make it available for use in reports, dashboards, and even on mobile dashboards like you might have on an Apple Watch. Now using the same principle, you can create your own reports in Power BI and even use some of the built-in analytics capabilities for generating insights and looking for anomalies. As the sample report from Microsoft shows on the next slide, Power BI can offer to detect anomalies in data, and in this case, to actually explain a month-to-month -month decrease in sales volume. 
If you click on Analyze and then Explain the Decrease, Power BI will show you a visualization um, that attributes that decrease to two product categories, which you know in this case may help us with forecasting or maybe with making other decisions at the business level. And this is data that we may not see in this format at the manufacturing level and is something that um, we'll see more of from the business level folks. So the last uh, example I wanted to talk through was change management. You know, an important driver of digital transformation initiatives is making companies more agile. And in order to adapt to changing market conditions and customer preferences, companies must have the freedom to be able to iterate rapidly in order to be able to stay competitive. Now, at the same time, moving quickly sometimes means breaking things. And it's equally important to plan for the inevitable disaster scenario so that you can roll back to a good known state. And finally, even with fast iteration, it's important to be able to demonstrate control. This is, of course, critical for regulated industries, but even non-regulated industries benefit strongly from having clear tracking of changes. The more automated this whole process can be, the more confidently and safely companies are able to iterate. A key technology for enabling automated change tracking is a version control system, like SVN or Git or even CVS uh, in the older days. And so while version control systems have been around for decades, they are quite new to the industrial automation world. Fortunately, Ignition provides best-in-class support out of the box. And so for our final example today, I'll be demonstrating change control using FOIR's cloud-based Ignition platform called Factory Stack, which includes a visual front end for Git. The Ignition 8 Deployment Best Practices Guide linked to here provides guidance on how you can set up a similar system yourself. So to start, consider an existing Ignition perspective screen to which we'd like to make a change. In this case, we'll use the Ignition Designer to change the label above a chart. You can see the original value there at the top and then what I'm changing to in the little pop-up. Using Factory Stack, when we hit Save inside the Ignition Designer, our change is immediately pushed up to a cloud-based Git repository where a properly authenticated user can visually observe the change. The system provides automated change tracking out of the box, complete with an auditable history of when and where resources were changed, which itself is enough for many companies to just have that uh, change log. Now, for other companies, making changes directly to a production system is not acceptable. And so these companies choose to require an approval workflow for migrating changes from development systems to test or production. For these cases, it's useful to use a concept called a pull or a merge request. When the developer is happy with the changes they made inside the Ignition Designer on the dev system, they can create a new pull request, which notifies a designated team that changes made to that development system are available for review and approval. If an approver is happy with those changes, they can choose to merge the pull request, which will appropriately pull those changes into the test or production system, maintaining a sort of digital paper trail along the way.